Hello everyone, Nicholas Thayer here with you again, another Ableton tutorial. Uh, before we get started today, I want to say a big thanks to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Link is below if you want to jump over there. And indeed, today's tutorial came from a suggestion over on Patreon. Uh, one of the Patreon members asked me about uh, creating generative rhythms. Uh, so I've looked a bit at generative melodies and ambient ideas there. So today we're going to take a look at making some generative rhythms. So some uh, rhythmic content. Uh, but that keeps evolving or, or uh, you know, sort of has a little bit of its own mind. So I have here a field recording that I've made. It's a recording of some pipes in an abandoned factory. That's the kind of thing I like to do in my free time is go to abandoned factories and hit things and record them. And it sounds a bit like this. So I've just, just with my zoom recorder and I think I'm just using my knuckles on the pipe. Had a lot of lovely resonance to it. Uh, these are the kind of sounds that I like to try and collect. So we're going to use this to create some kind of a, a rhythmic content today. Already it's a bit rhythmic, but uh, yeah, let's let's see what we can do. So I'm going to bring in an, a simpler, and I'm going to just drop that uh, drop that field recording into simpler, and it looks like that. Now we don't need that field recording channel anymore. Okay, so within simpler. Uh, we have three modes, of course, that we can use. Uh, we have the classic mode, uh, one-shot mode, uh, and slice mode. And today we're going to use slice mode. So I click on slice, and you can see it has, surprise, surprise, sliced up the sample for me. Now we have a number of different ways uh, we can that we can tell Ableton to slice it up. In this case, uh, the default is it slices by transient, so it automatically finds what we call hit points and you can see it's found a lot of hit points each time I've hit uh, hit the pipe. Uh, we can also slice by beat so it divides the sample up into you know however long it thinks it is and divides it by beat. This is great if you're cutting up drum loops or that, that sort of a thing. Uh, we can divide by region so uh, this is a uh, great for longer samples and you can see it's got a time base down the bottom as opposed to a beat base or we can divide manually we can come in and put in our own hit points but today I want to use transient and you can see I have this sensitivity dial which says how how sensitive do I want it to be in terms of picking transients so if I go all the, like as I go less and less sensitive you can see it picks less and less hit points uh, so I want it to be quite sensitive but not and I think we're looking pretty good here. I'm just going to zoom in. And yeah, we're looking we're looking really good here. I'm just going to manually go, manually go through. And you can uh, click and drag any of these if they're not quite where you want them to be. So I'm just going to eyeball some of these. Yeah, get them nice and tight. Uh, yeah. So now I've got uh, them nice and tight. I've got my MIDI keyboard here. I'm just going to uh, just play through, see how they sound. Oh, that first one. I don't need that first one. Let's even just move the start point to there and that will make it. Okay, looking pretty good. So now uh, I'm going to just make a MIDI event. I'm going to make that MIDI event play a C1 and I'm going to make it the length of one bar. So I'm going to hit uh, legato and it makes it the length of one bar. Uh, so C1 is going to play back the first of these slices. So it's going to sound. Oh, you need to turn that there. So far, so predictable. Right, now let's see what we can do with this. So first of all, let's bring in an arpeggiator. I'm on Ableton 12, so the arpeggiator is gonna look a little bit different, but already you can see uh, we can change this. This is now playing some kind of a rhythm. It's quite quiet, let's, let's turn that up a little bit. Playing some kind of a rhythm. I can change the rate of the rhythm using the arpeggiator. Uh, I can change uh, 
at the moment I'm using trigger mode, so what that means is that each time a sample is triggered it plays through to the end of the sample. Uh, I can use gate mode, which means it's only going to play for the length of time that I'm holding down the key, or the length of time that Ableton is holding down the key. Uh, so if I can adjust this gate here, you can hear it getting shorter and shorter. I can adjust the fade in and fade out. So let's give it a little bit of a fade out. And let's make this gate nice and long. Uh, you know what? Let's change the tempo. It's Sunday. Let's make it. Uh, let's make it 150. There we go. Um, okay. So far, so good. I can now also add in a uh, a bit of random velocity. So I'm going to use the velocity plugin in here. Going to change the input and output range to be 64, and then up up the random. And let's change the amount of effect that that velocity is having on the sound. So where do we have that? Uh, here we go. Too much. Add a bit of random panning. Okay, so far so good. We've turned this one sample into something that has some movement. It's quite interesting, but we're only getting started. Okay. So let's let's bring in something else. Let's bring in a random so that at the moment it's always triggering C1, so we're always playing this sample. So if I bring in a random, and what this is going to do is each time there is a new MIDI note, so we're before the arpeggiator, so this is going to be at the start of every bar, I'm going to say, make that note random. No, no, we're a bit loud here, we're distorting. So as you can see, it's picking a random slice each time now. Uh, I'm going to up this because I think we can go up to 24. I think we can go even higher than 24. Let's add another one in here and say you can go up and down 12. Actually, I've got a better idea. I'm going to change this MIDI note to C2. G2. And I'm going to say you can go up and down 18. Nice. Okay. So now we're, we're beginning to. Oh, this is still kind of a little bit distorting. Let's bring it down a bit again. So what? Going to put a limiter after it. Uh, just control that output a bit. Okay, uh, but let's take this a step further. So uh, we, so we're just using an arpeggiator here to sort of make it like re-trigger the the rhythm. So it's triggering a random rhythm. Uh, well, it's triggering a rhythm in uh, eighth notes, uh, and then it's randomizing the velocity, so we're getting this kind of movement and everything to it. But what if we wanted to do like what an arpeggiator does? You know, so let's turn this one note into more than one note. So I am now going to bring in another another random, uh, and I'm going to say chance uh, all the way up again, and we're going to go. We're going to say you can go. Uh, up and down, and I'm going to group that. Uh, I'm going to create a, a chain. So this this chain at the top is the dry chain. So that's going to be the output of this random. And this random is now creating another random note. And you can see now it's playing two notes for each rhythm. Let's do this a bunch of times. So now we're getting each time, each new bar, we're getting one input into this random, which is generating a four chord note, <laughs> a four note chord, sorry. Um, and each of those four notes is, is then being arpeggiated. And you can see it uh, being reflected in the, in the way that the, the sample is being played back here. And we can adjust all sorts of things. So let's now make the gate a bit shorter. and tight. 
that's kind of cool. I'm kind of enjoying that already. Um, let's bring that gate back up again. And we can change the MIDI style here to... Uh, let's, play, let's play poly, so it can play more than one note at a time. So now if I stretch the gate out, so now it gives it time to actually play through the sample. So we're getting a little bit of overlap with some of these samples now. Let's see what happens if we change the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the arpeggiator style. And add some steps in here. No, change this distance to one. Let's control this sound a little bit more. It's still a little bit funky in the, the way it's jumping. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's <laughs> change how much the random <laughs> is doing on the velocity instead. I was like, yeah, let's put a compressor at the end. There's too much, velo too much volume difference, but of course that's being done by me. Um, so yeah, that's the basic concept I wanted to look at today, creating some generative rhythms and um, yeah, explore this yourself. What I would probably do here is uh, create some macros now. So I'm going to group all of that. Um, uh, let's add some macros. So one of the macros that might be interesting to add is, uh, is the gate here so that these things are easily accessible. Another macro that might be interesting to add is the style. Of course, the rate. Uh, and uh, let's also map a macro for the randomness of the velocity. That was nice to have that accessible. So, so now let's shorter. Gate. Where's the gate? There we go. Uh, this is going to be nice to have as a random as a macro as well. There's the fade out here. Let's add you to there. So there you go. There is the set. There is the technique. Uh, creating some random rhythms and as you can see like the depending on the um, uh, depending on the source sample that you're using uh, you can create a lot of uh, a lot of variation on this um, yeah hope you got something from today <laughs> that kind of came to an end a lot quicker than I expected it to but um, there's the technique uh, thanks for tuning in Enjoy generating rhythms.